Hello everybody, it's Peter the Rock, Sunday the 22nd of October in the afternoon looking at a red berry bush but that's not the reason I'm here the reason I'm here is this big rather imposing building in front of me uh, as the saying goes in the Peter the Rock family tree I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy which is completely irrelevant but this is or used to be um, the HQ, one of the HQs of the British Secret Services in World War II and um, not as famous as Bletchley Park, not as big and not used for the same reasons. They, uh, a few captured German POWs, that's prisoner of war, were held here and interrogated. I hope it was uh, a rather sort of pleasant interrogation, unlike the uh, interrogations that have gone on since about the year 2000. Anyway, this is now a De Vere Hotel, but it used to be called Latimer House. The most famous resident who was incarcerated was a chap called Rudolf Hess. You might have heard of him. Now, Rudolf was an Anglophile. Now, if, if you, uh, for those who don't know, the suffix file at the end of something means you like it. So you could be a Francophile like France, you could be an Anglophile like England, um, I don't know, Sinophile, you like China, maybe. Um, but phobic is the exact opposite, it means you hate or you fear it. So if you're Anglophobic, you have a fear of English people. I think that's possibly the first time on YouTube that word has ever been said because I've just invented it. Anyway, um, Rudolf Hess flew to Scotland, as it happened, in a purloined Messerschmitt in, well, within, in the middle of World War II to negotiate a peace settlement. Because he thought, well, you know, the Germans and the Brits are all very similar. And we are. We come from the same Anglo-Saxon stock originally, I think. A lot of our kings were German, George I, II, III and IV, varying degrees of Germanic ancestry. Prince Albert was a German, the great-great-great-great-grandfather of our present King Charles III, and so on. Uh, anyway, he had this grandiose idea to fly to Britain and negotiate a peace settlement which would have ended World War II. His plane crashed in Scotland, I think he demanded to see, it might have been Lord Clarendon, something like that, because um, he thought uh, this chap was uh, also in favour of a peace settlement. But he was arrested, of course, and he was brought here and questioned. Um, I don't know quite what they got out of him, whether he revealed any secrets or not. Who knows? But anyway, at the end of the war, people thought, well, what are we going to do with this chap? He's not really a bad guy, because he wanted to end the war. Well, they put him in a, a prison in Berlin. Berlin, which was getting divided into four sections, Russian, American, German and British. And there was a Berlin Wall put up in the 1960s. And in this mess, there was a prison called Spandau Prison. And Rudolf Hess was incarcerated there for many years, possibly decades, and uh, just left to live his life out until he was the only one left in the prison. And the Brits, the Russians, the Americans, I think the Germans were involved, might have been the French, took it in turns to guard him, which couldn't have been very difficult, really, because they obviously had more guards than prisoners, only had one prison. So, that's how he ended up, and he, but he carried on living and living and living until a great old age, I think either late 80s or early 90s, and he thought, I've had enough of this, and apparently he hanged himself. But at one time he was a resident, I use the word in inverted commas, of this place here, Latimer House. And you can imagine the interrogations by the British 
Secret Service. Hello, old boy. What are you doing flying into Scotland? We know you're here to get some secrets. Nine, nine, nine. Ikfar flying into Scotland to negotiate a peace settlement for Weltwar Krieg II. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pull the other one, matey. Um. <laughs> I imagine... <laughs> I imagine a conversation <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I don't know if they call it Welt Krieg Zwei. Don't know what they call it. Anyway, it's on the top of a hill here in the Chess Valley, looking down and avoiding the sun. You can see how the River Chess expands into a lake. This is the widest part of the River Chess. Beautiful valley. Very good place to hold a prisoner because if they do escape, um, then you can either see them rushing down to cross the valley in that direction or you can see them running up the valley or down the valley in that direction and you can you know you can see for miles in certain points so people wouldn't wouldn't escape well of course in World War two I don't think they had that infrared but uh, I don't, don't know if he had any intention of escaping that if he tried we don't know it's a secret Lots of secrets in this place. I just met some a couple of lads who just walked here from Chesham. So I explained a little bit of the history of this building. And uh, one of them suggested that uh, it would be nice to actually see, see the cell in which Rudolf was held. Um, and I said that it's very unlikely that it's still a cell, this place being a hotel. And even if guests don't, you know, use the right fork and spoon, they're usually not incarcerated these days. Um, just one last comment on the word Anglophile. Um, there was a film called Philomena. Uh, this is about a, a, a girl who got pregnant, went to a convent in Ireland, I think, and uh, where there were a lot of similar, similar girls and babies and eventually her, her baby was taken away from her, adopted by an American family and brought up. And 20 or 30 or 40 years later, she wanted to see what happened to her son. And um, it's, a, it's a lovely poignant film. Steve Coogan is the reporter, uh, Martin Sixsmith, and he helps her actually find her son who unfortunately has died. And the son's name, Bizarrely, I think his surname is his new surname is Hess. So came full circle. I think Philomena possibly means a liker of the mean, someone who likes the middle. But I could I could be wrong. So there you go. Bit of film interest, bit of World War II interest, bit of scenery interest, bit of prison history, and a bit about Rudolf Hess. His, first, his other Christian names, I think it was Rudolf William Richard Hess. Very Anglophile names. So a rather tragic story as, as war stories often are. Anyway, th thank you very much for watching. Cheers.